question for you. Okay. Film or, or digital? Film or digital? Which do you like better? Depends. I don't have a straight answer on that one. Holy cow. Sorry. Dark room versus light room. Oh, light room. For our light room, we're working in dark room. Well, now because I don't have a dark room. <laughs> Silly question. Filters or Photoshop? Filters. Prime or telephoto? Prime or telephoto? Prime lenses or telephoto? Or zooms, you mean? Um, primes if I can get them, but uh, sometimes the zooms are a little bit more convenient. Apples or oranges? Oranges. Oranges? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How does one become a master photographer? Apparently, one must drink Yorkshire tea. Cheers? Cheers. Oh, pity. <laughs> pity. Pity. Only available in Canada. Now, where the hell is Yorkshire? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea where Yorkshire is. Okay. Today, we're out here to shoot Cloudscape. So, what are the obvious things you have to do to get ready to shoot Cloudscape? What is a Cloudscape? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I photographed clouds for years, but I never, uh, I never really referred to them as cloudscapes. Well, why not? I don't know. Well, well, the object of shooting a cloudscape is just smoothing the clouds out. That's right. Yeah. Longer exposure. Longer exposure. So what you're saying is, besides the addition of more spice rum, <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> that one must use some kind of neutral density filter. Well, that's exactly it. You're gonna use a neutral density filter. So, uh, what are you gonna shoot? What, what what are your settings gonna be? Well, small aperture and a long exposure time. Well, yeah. So I'm gonna we're gonna shoot with my lowest ISO. Yep. Open it wide open to 2022. That's not wide open. Narrow. Shut it down, sir. Yep. Shut it down to 2022. And then I'm, what I'm trying, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try to get about a three-minute exposure. Okay. So we want the clouds to be moving. Yeah. That way, that's the reason why. You know, most people will shoot um, a long exposure for water, mm -hmm. and not very many people go out and shoot uh, clouds. And right now we're waiting for the clouds to roll in, but that's basically what I'm looking for. Is I'm going to shoot with my lowest ISO because mm -hmm. uh, it is a little bright out here. So I'd be like 64. Yep. I'm gonna shoot as wide open as possible. Uh, and then I'm going- Stop down. Stop down. And then I'm gonna shoot with a uh, filter on it. You've got lots. I've got lots, yeah. Actually, I have a three and a 10. Really? Yeah. So, that's a six stop. Six stop. Sorry, I have a six stop and a 10 stop. Um, so, as you can see, that's like if I cover my face, you're not going to see anything through there. So I have two options with, with, with me. Did you bring one? Yeah, it's in my bag. In neutral density? Yeah. The cool thing about this is, once you set up your camera, you then add the, the filter afterwards. Yeah. Once you've got the camera to the proper exposure, then we'll put the filter on. And then when you buy the filter, you've got two ways of figuring out what your exposure settings are going to be. It comes with a card, mm -hmm. or there's also an app. There's also an app you can use to yeah. figure out what your exposure is going to be. So within the app that I have, if I set the app to what my exposure time is, and then I select a 10 stop, it'll give me how many minutes I'm going to be uh, extending for. Mm -hmm. So on that side, uh, it's one of those things that's pretty cool. I don't do enough of this. No. I really like cloudscapes and I don't shoot enough of it. We have some awesome clouds here, but nine times out of ten, uh, you need something of interest behind you. And then yeah. now, for are you me, gonna shoot film? Yeah. Well this is gonna be interesting. Well, so how are you gonna work out your time? Well, first off, I mean uh, I'm I've got the same app to figure out the exposure time, but now what I have to do is I have to use my other app that figures out reciprocity failure. Okay, yep. 
So once I've got that sorted out, which will extend my exposure time even longer. Yeah. Hmm. Who knew I did it? Well, I know we've talked about reciprocity on the failure. Yeah. Before. Yes. That's film's inability basically to record super long exposures. It'll tend to underexpose, so quite often what you have to do is you have to make an adjustment to your exposure you know, to correct that. Uh, some films, especially color films like slide film, you may have to use some filtration. Belvia and Provia, for example, tend to, their slide films, they tend to go a little bit on the green side, so you need a little bit of magenta filtration to correct that out. Mm, so the colors will bleed. Not bleed per se. They just well, they don't react the same. Yeah, as yeah. The film basically it'll it'll just record. You know, if you're using a super long exposure, it'll just tend to sort of like overemphasize the green. Hmm. Good graphic. Yep. Yeah. Oh, cool. But well, then again, you can always turn to black and white. And so, long as, and so long as you don't um, get sunspots or uh, hot spots in the film, then you should be okay. Yeah. Would you get hot spots in the film? Well, it depends on what you're doing. I mean, I, I haven't really done too much long exposure with pointing the camera directly at the sun, so I couldn't really say. Well, the sun's in our face right now, yeah. so behind our video camera. But I'm shooting this direction and get these clouds behind us. Yeah. So I'm going to get shooting right now because I don't want to lose the clouds. <laughs> so that was good to me. Sounds good. Let's go. been out here for approximately um, two, three hours. Yeah, it was, uh, clouds just seemed to disappear. So we've had to wait uh, a long time for the clouds to actually start to roll in. It's getting darker out, so the sun is going down, and it's getting, um, clouds are starting to roll in. Yeah, so it's really been a, a day of patience uh, of standing around and, and basically you know, sitting around doing nothing. We did have some tea. Yes. <laughs> so, what was, that, uh, what was that additive you put into it? That milk. Do you like milk in your tea? Honey? Tastes like a lot. Yeah, okay. Okay, I didn't know milk tastes like that. So, because it's so bright out, I'm doing something a little different. I'm using a 10 stop and a 6 stop stop together to try and uh, get it to work. So I'm up to a 15 minute exposure time. And I'm doing live comp on my Olympus, which is basically a 60 second exposure, but it keeps doing it over and over and over again, just capturing new light. So yeah, this is something I was gonna discuss as well, is that uh, Lars is doing live comp. So basically, come back over here and we'll explain live comp. Live comp is it's a setting on the Olympus camera. It's essentially in the manual mode and you go past bulb when you're turning the uh, dial for your shutter speeds. What it does essentially is you're, you're setting a base exposure. In this case here, because I'm using a 10 stop filter, my base exposure is about a 60 seconds. And then what you do is you go into the menu under your composite settings and you put in your exposure which is 60 seconds. So when I click the shutter button the first time, it says click the shutter to prepare for live comp. It's going to record the ambient light right at that moment. Then what happens is you click the shutter one second time and what it does now is every couple seconds it's going to do a 60 second exposure and just record new light. So what happens now with the clouds, I'll get interesting patterns with them, which is kind of a cool thing. It's something I've never really done before. I've used it for star trails, which was, uh, which was a lot of fun. But this is one of the things when I bought into the Olympus system, the features that the camera had were something that really intrigued me and getting the opportunity to use them and actually benefit from them has been fantastic. Yeah.